Fratelloni's Hardware. Rolling. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1,253, Feb 26, 2024. I don't know if we'll get to the record. It was 64 degrees on this day in 1896. And it was 20. <laughs> Jesus. It was 21 below in 1897. Play this song. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from it's the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight, King, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense. You are mayor. It's already been a long week, huh? Uh, John and I were talking this morning. Uh, this warm weather is uh, unseasonable, uh, but enjoyable from my perspective. Hell yeah. And I was just wondering, back in 1921, for example, that's the year uh, a calendar year received its first 60-degree temp uh, in the year. And, and that was on Feb 15 in 1921. It hit 63. Ooh. And that's the first time uh, 60 shows up in Feb in the brief amount of time that we've been keeping records. So, John, what did you find for 1921? 1921, it did not uh, cause any stir in either of the papers. I saw both the Minneapolis Star and the Star Tribune. Mm -hmm. In the Star, there was a tiny little box bottom left of the front page that just gave the forecast <laughs> with no temp readings at all it just said rain or snow possible tonight but warmer this evening uh, no mention of temps at all uh and there was a tiny box also on the front page it said it was a story and it, uh, the lead was those who fall to bank furnace fires tonight believing minneapolis's mild weather will continue indefinitely will awake shivering tomorrow so apparently it was supposed to get uh, oh, sim similar to what's happening today. Wow. 16. It's supposed yep. to get very cold tomorrow. There right, were then, we, then we jumped forward. We went to 1981 when on February 16th in 1981, mm -hmm. it was 60 degrees. Any any news about that? Uh, the only thing was, and before I do that, the, on the 20, uh, 1921 run, one, uh, 25 stories on the front page. 25. Started oh, yeah. They used to lay out the paper uh, slap yeah. dashery. Yeah. Uh, on February 16th, 1981, the only thing about the weather, there was a picture on the front page, mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, from the ground, a photo yeah. of joggers and a lot of water, and it said joggers face unseasonable problem, colon, puddles. Okay. And that was it. There was that nothing, was nothing else. Okay. Uh, there was a picture in the metro section of four fishermen standing on Lake Calhoun. And mm. most, most of what they were standing on was water. puddles. Puddles. Yeah. yeah. And there was ice too. And it said, watch out. And then there was another picture of a cross country ski race that was mostly done on mud and grass in Mora because be there, there was no snow. And other than that, there's no, uh, you know, nothing. That, All right. Uh, thank you. For, thank you for that report, mm -hmm. John. Yes. I, I was reading the Wall Street Journal Saturday, and this small story caught my eye. It was on page You're two. A teeny one, page yeah. two. You read thoroughly, don't you? And I, I, uh, I noted uh, Wisconsin, and uh, the headline was "Teens Sought in Luxury Car Thefts." Uh, it's very short. I can read it. A group of teenagers believed to be from Chicago broke into a luxury car dealership in Wisconsin and drove off with nine vehicles valued at more than a half million dollars. Wow. Sunday's heist at a Jaguar Land Rover dealership in Waukesha was captured on surveillance camera footage showing nine masked suspects filing into the dealership before each drives off in a car. Uh, Waukesha is about 19 miles west of Milwaukee. The video also shows one car being backed up and smashed through an overhead service door. Waukesha Police Captain Dan Bauman said the suspects broke into the dealership about 6 a.m. Sunday, found where its car keys were stored, and then activated the key fobs to find the cars they stole. The vehicles are valued at more than 583 grand. One suspect, a 17-year-old Chicago boy, was arrested Sunday 
in the southern Wisconsin community of Pleasant Prairie after the stolen vehicle he was driving along Interstate 94 crashed because these kids don't, don't know how, how to, to drive. drive. <laughs> I was crashed during a police pursuit. He was being held at the Waukesha County Jail on a $50,000 bond. Police said Sunday that the suspects are believed to be an organized crime group of teenagers from the Chicago area. And I thought to myself, what if Jaguar was still located in downtown Minneapolis? It used to be on Hennepin and Washington. Mm -hmm. It was Hansard, mm -hmm. and they moved. So what if a Jaguar Land Rover dealership was still in downtown under the purview of the Minneapolis City Council? And let's say three or four times a year it had been robbed of the luxury cars. What do you think the response of the city council would be having, uh, having they already have provided evidence to what their response might be. Yes. You in the back, they would sue Jaguar. They would go after Jaguar uh, Land Rover for failure to manufacture because they manufactured keys that actually identified the car. Mm -hmm. And that makes it way too easy. Readily available. When you break into a dealership and then you press a key fob and note, oh, it's the third one down there. It's the red one. That's 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 the fault of Jaguar Land Rover. That's where we are in this country today. Yep. Wow. They, they, and, and it would even be more likely that that would be the response because it's also a city council that would pr be predisposed unless it was driven by an equity uh officer they would be predisposed to frown upon high-end cars luxury cars jags and and land rovers so they'd this they would be licking their chops to relieve the criminal aspect of it from the youth they would go after the manufacturer for making key fobs that just they identify the car they shouldn't identify the car but you mentioned something, too. The organized ring out of Chicago. What is that distance to to Waukesha, as Johnny once Hour called it? 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, so it is, it is fairly close. Okay. It's nothing. Wow. It's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. You live in a northern suburb, you can go to a Marquette game in about 55 minutes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then uh, I know, too, that uh, I was reminded that you could you used to be able to steal a car with maybe a screwdriver and a piece of wire. It was it was back back in the good old days. In the good old days <laughs> when people were honest, yeah. Cars were terribly easy to steal. Yep. Well, I got a note from Steve Mulholland who's in the uh the belly of the beast. Sticking their noses in the conflict between Israel and Palestine was the first order of business for the newly assembled Minneapolis City Council. Their encore is to jump on Keith Ellison's coattails and call for a recall of Kia and Hyundai vehicles, which are being efficiently snarfed up by resourceful urban utes. You've already discussed the absurdity of blaming auto manufacturers or crimes committed by misguided young people and how there was a time when any car could be stolen with a screwdriver and some wire. Yet there was no epidemic of auto thefts, frankly, because it was a simpler time when people actually obeyed laws. Just because you could steal a car didn't mean you had to. There's also been a rash of yard items being stolen in Minneapolis. Should we file a suit against Adirondack? But what this council fails to realize is that if even, in, even if Kia and Hyundai wave a magic wand rendering all their vehicles new and used impossible to steal, the Utes would find something else to take from law-abiding citizens. We're putting a Band-Aid on an infection. It will never fix the problem. Keep pushing back loyal GL or Steve Mulholland in the belly of the beast in the liberal lakes area of Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. But he's right. I, I've told you guys this story before, but it bears repeating. One time there was a, 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 a sudden ruckus in our front yard at our house when I was a kid. Okay. And many, many neighbors had congregated. And it turned out that a 25-horse outboard on the old man's boat had been stolen overnight. That's a heavy engine. Right. And no one could believe it. People were monster. standing around in the yard and rubbing their chins. And you know, What do you think happened, Henry? Yeah, right. I don't know. You can tell they that, got it off here. That's and, a two-person job. Right. And You'd have to be awful strong and awful quiet. I, I guess my uh, 
I guess my point had nothing to do with the size of the motor or what it weighed. What about the front yard being the lakeside? Did that have anything to do with <laughs> <laughs> that? This was in the front yard. Yeah. My point was that people were astonished by a theft. Yeah. Astonished. We knew that. We just opted to change the focus. Of We've that. heard the story before. Yeah, we, we had, you know, a couple, two, three times a week. But you're right. And uh, when you were going on and on and on about the car thefts we currently have, I just uh, can't stop thinking about how easily it's all solved by a $30 steering wheel lock that's visible from the outside when you see it. Hell, it probably doesn't even have to work. It's solved by something easier than that, oh, which is very difficult to recover. It's it's solved by people having a sense of obligation to their fellow yeah. man. It almost seems, you're right, it's too late. It seems like we'll never be able to go back. It really does. Uh, it's just, well. In more ways than one. Well, I mean, I, how do I count the ways? How do I count the ways? I'd start with one. Yeah, I mean, a, a real good place to start at the very beginning. It's it's rhetorical, this. rhetorical, I think. Oh, are those the ones you're not supposed to answer? Yeah. Hmm. The uh, There's an emailer who's found fault with our ruling on the bit of cookie that was taken. Oh. From oh, a gas really? station, unless he's having a laugh. Hmm. There were, a bit of cookie was taken from a gas station in... Uh, the Brainerd area, and the fellow who emailed us wanted a ruling on whether he uh, did he in fact commit a crime. And mm. well, in fact, he did apparently because the, he was he has to appear in court because mm. the the uh, clerk on duty felt violated that a little <laughs> piece of crap cookie was taken. <laughs> and uh, uh, this Joe Joe from Egan writes, please see Exhibit A attached. It is a photo of a quarter-sized cookie found over the weekend at my local Target store. Did I pick up and eat it? No, because I know the difference between right and wrong. Mm. What's next? I decide to pick lilacs down on Main Street from some curmudgeon's front yard. I wait for Rookie to look away, and I swipe the half-eaten pork chop from his plate at Kitchen and ooh, Rail. Ooh. We don't steal. And then he sends uh, the exhibit. Uh, the cookie, the little hunk of cookie okay. that was bit off, you yeah. know, and uh, well, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. I there mean, it is. A little turd like cookie. May I introduce here. into evidence photo number one? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think he's having a bit of a laugh with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we were right, um, but let's just hope the judge throws it out. I have a viewpoint on our show, on me, from Vietnam. Hmm. Oh, your analysis and nuanced, thoughtful takes on many issues is why I've been listening since the radio days. And now that I live in Vietnam, I've never missed a podcast. That said, I'm surprised you failed to see the irony in your shallow analysis of Trump consistently saying that he was stunted at the age of seven by some event or trauma. Do you see the irony? Your close-minded, narrow view of this one topic looks like the same stunted Trump derangement syndrome that you accuse Trump of being limited by. To make matters worse, you seem to hold the staff hostage from any attempt at a nuanced debate on the subject. Still love the show, and don't get me wrong, but just hope you can take a step back and see how your biases are holding the show back from being even better. Cheers from Saigon, Charles Mantufel. May, may I go first? Yeah. <laughs> and I think I speak for the whole gang, the four of us here. Um, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> with me or Charles with, Mantufo? With the, the fellow from Vietnam. Disagree it's, in what sense? Uh, it's not the Matthew show. It's not the Chris show. It's not the John show. It's not the Kenny show. It's the Joe show. We get in our jabs, but, you know, it's your show. You do what you want. I do agree that you do have Trump derangement syndrome, though. I do and not. I do not. Have yes, to. you absolutely do, Joe. Well, you, no, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you do. You hate him so much no, that you're obsessed out of by it. Staying out of this one. I'm going to sit this play out. Yeah, me too. But it, 
I, I think speaking again for the four of us, we don't care. It's it's Joe Suchere's Garage Logic. It's your show. The policies that tend to be put in place with the likes of Trump in office are more appealing to me than any poly policies put in place under Biden. All right. But but the but Trump to me is the wrong messenger. He's a despicable human being. Now, if that if that suggests derangement syndrome, so be it. I I don't fly off the handle at every mention of Trump. I, he doesn't well, consume he doesn't well. consume my daily thinking. It's just I just think it's a shame this once great country has come to, come down to these two pathetic creatures for the president of the United States. I just think I it's agree. it's just pathetic. And Haley losing by what was it forty percent over the weekend? Is that the right number? Forty percent? Well, forty percent of Republicans 40. did not vote for Trump. Yeah, so. right. And so uh, I was interesting eating uh, reading the pieces about that this morning. The policies the that that would be put in place under a Trump well. well it, even that might be in, in question, given some of his comments. But generally speaking, the policies put in place during his presidency were far better than the policies that have been put in place by Biden. Right? So I can see that. But so the country the, deserves a decent human being as president. Gotcha. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. We are here today. Oh, no. At this prestigious insert location <laughs> to talk with people. Okay. People in uniform, people in suits, people in t shirts, people in dresses. And all of these people are here today together. Okay. Because we want to be unburdened by the things that have burdened us in the past mm -hmm. and in the present and perhaps even in the future. And as I look around, I see the sun is shining and I see that there are trees over there and <laughs> there is ground beneath us and I have hands and they are clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What's her name, Chris? Elsa Kurt. And yeah. a lot of the Kamala ones, and she's fantastic, but yeah. some of the Kamala ones she does, we can't use because she likes to throw in a curse word. But, but the beauty of that is that's oh. the all encompassing Kamala speech. That could have been placed. That's all you anywhere. need to know. Yep. Insert location. Right. And then you got it covered. I'm glad to be here in. Grand Rapids, Michigan, then she would say the same nonsense. Unburdened is Unburdened. a big one with her. Unburdened, but I have hands. I have hands, and they are clapping. <laughs> so if Trump, during the last election, remember the lead up the summer um, before the election, Trump was just off the rails on social media. If he had kept his mouth shut, if he wasn't on social media, would you have cast a vote for him? Would your would your tune be different about him if he was simply more presidential? I I have to think that would that would alter my thinking a great deal. But he's the least and presidential I, person I've ever if, come if, across. And I you, think you are in the majority. And I think my personal feeling is that's why he lost. He's his own worst enemy. He is his own worst enemy. If he could have stayed off of Twitter, though, he'd be a different person. Which yeah. would make oh, us so. probably, well, his ego, his et cetera. Oh, right. I mean, right. would make Oh, him, oh you're right. The he thing, would have to be it, a whole know, different person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he and he wouldn't be as despicable, as Joe likes to call him, as as some of right. us find him. Yeah, yeah. But he does one poke too many. That's what his problem. He can't leave things alone. Well, he's uh, he's not fit. He, I'm sorry. The policies that were created under the Trump presidency were better than the policies created under the Biden policy. A, there's no guarantee that the next Trump presidency would result in policies, some of which might be very threatening to us, some of which maybe not. 
But the first time around, he was, yeah, much better than what's happened under this, uh, whoever's running the country now. It's not Biden. It might be Obama. It might be Michelle Obama. It might be a... We've heard the term uh, uh, recently of the O'Biden presidency, which... Why I, don't you I play Joe? Play. You had some Joe there. Oh, that might take me a moment. I didn't yeah. Well, while you're doing that, the other thing, what Joe talks about and everything, there's, why do you think all the former people that worked for Trump are speaking out against him. Yeah, they, they couldn't and, well, get, wait to get away. And, and are yeah. saying he's he's a danger to America, et cetera, et cetera. Is it just because they're jealous, because they're angry at him for, you know, maybe losing their jobs? What See, that's part of it for me, too. Is, mm -hmm. And those aren't, those aren't, I mean, crazy people. Those are actual people who have worked in government all their lives, <laughs> for better or for worse, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. But there's there's a lot of them. There's, it's not just like it's like two or three guys. There's a lot. Do you have the uh, context for this Biden remark? It's gonna. Need, I I need a minute because I I lost it on my clip because yeah. I did not know that you were gonna ask for oh, it. Oh, you Chris, lost it, huh? Okay. Chris, are we allowed to play lost stuff from it. Saturday Night Live? We are we're not. not. No, we are not. not. All right. Because comedian Shane Gillis was on. And we were talking about this before the show. They did one really funny skit oh. where Shane played Trump and he had the Trump shoes on. And oh my God, it's, it's just really it's so funny. close to yeah. home. 